In the previous video, I looked at the hometown locations of all 500 plus players in the top four college football programs in 2022-2023 season so that I could see if there were any interesting patterns or just what it looked like. Here's how I used GIS and Excel to do it. I found the rosters of each of the four teams at Our Lads. You can use whatever website you want, but it's easiest if you get them all from the same place so the formatting is consistent. And then I paste the values without formatting into an Excel table. I got rid of all the unnecessary rows and then I added a column for school. And I copy and pasted the roster of all four teams into the same spreadsheet. I'll be geocoding the hometowns of these players a little later on, but I also need the coordinates of their schools because I'm gonna be doing some dot connecting. I zoomed into the home turf of each of the four teams in ArcGIS Pro and I copied its coordinates and then I pasted that coordinate into Excel and flood filled it down for every member of the team. So I end up with a spreadsheet that has 500 plus students on it plus added columns for school and the school's coordinate. You may have noticed that when I pasted in those coordinates into the spreadsheet, it pasted them into one cell. I need to split those out into two separate cells, one for latitude, one for longitude. How do I do this? I'm gonna use a trick called text to columns, and I'm gonna use the W character as the thing that will split this single column into two separate columns. So anywhere it sees a W, boom, drops it into a new column. And now I've separated out my latitude and my longitude. And I can label these quickly. I'll call them destination longitude, destination latitude because that's their destination school. I'm going to do control H to do a quick find and replace and I'm going to look for all the degree characters and just replace them with absolutely nothing. I also don't need that N label for north N anymore so I can do a find and replace for that too. Find N, replace with nothing. Gets rid of all the ends. But when I got rid of my W's I've lost track of the fact that we're working in the western hemisphere so these are actually negative longitude values. How do I do this? I'm just gonna add a formula here and multiply these by negative one. And now we're back in the Western Hemisphere with a more mathematically useful version of the Western Hemisphere instead of a W. Now I can get rid of that original redundant longitude value, but first I'll have to make a safe values version of this column so it doesn't get messed up when I delete it. That's it for my destination location. But what about my origin location? This is the hometown, city, comma, state. We can use the same text to columns trick to split these into different columns using the comma as the separator. But there's one little trick because a few of these fellas are from overseas. So we have two commas. So we'll need to give this spreadsheet two additional columns. Insert, insert, I'll grab this, text to columns, and I'll delimit it with a comma, and finish. Now it's split it up into city, state, and country. And rarely, country occurs, like in Australia, and Canada, and Germany. Okay, out of Excel and into ArcGIS Pro. I'm gonna open the analysis tab and fire up the tools. I'm gonna to look for a geoprocessing tool called Geocode. And I'm gonna use Geocode addresses. Now there's only 500 of these, so you could use whatever geocoder you want. And we're only dealing with city and state, pretty much. Pretty simple operation. I'll point to my table. I'll add it. I don't have my own local input address locator, which means I'm gonna hit up the ArcGIS World Geocoding Service, which ching is gonna cost me some credits. Let's check. Estimate credits, 20 credits. And it's not like a one-to-one -one breakdown, but if I look up the cost of credits, it's 100 bucks for a thousand credits, which means this would cost me about two dollars. Okay, so it's automatically parsed the city as being city, state for state, and country for country. That's great. I've renamed my destination file to be players in my geodatabase. Let's go. And there they are, glorious. Let's get this map into a suitable projection. That's more like it. Now you can definitely see the clusters around the four tournament schools, which are Georgia, Michigan, Texas Christian, and Ohio State. But they're all currently green, so I'm gonna make them unique value by school. And I can style these in school colors to help me keep track. Bing! 
The first law of geography tells us that location matters. And we can certainly see the clustering around these schools and the recruiting footprints are denser nearby. There are also some interesting places like Chicago, Florida, California, out east that are not nearby the four playoff schools but are hotbeds of recruitment. But they're also hotbeds of population. And now we can connect some dots to help us visually and quantitatively get a sense for the amount of traveling that the players took in getting to their schools, or more realistically, the amount of traveling that assistant coaches did in recruiting them. We can connect some dots. I'm gonna open the attribute table for our rosters. And helpfully, the geocoding service, in addition to placing these hometowns geographically, also gave us an XY value, or latitude and longitude value for these hometowns. And we also, if you'll recall, manually entered in the school latitude longitude, their destination. We can do an origin to destination line. I'll open the analysis tools again. This time I'll search for XY to line. I'll choose my rosters as the input and the start X, which is their hometown origin longitude is X and the start Y is Y. End X is their destination or school longitude and the end Y is destination latitude. We'll stick with geodesic, nice and precise and curvy, following the shape of the earth as it ought. And I definitely want to preserve the attributes so I still know the players and school info. I love origin destination lines. And I can symbolize these lines just like I did with the points. Unique values by school. And I'll show you how to do a tapered line. In the structure, add a global effect for tapered polygon, if you look closely, we've got a skinny bit and a thicker bit, but it's only gonna have an outline, so these lines will look like triangles, which means I need to add a symbol layer for fill, and then I can get rid of the outline. And then I can just give it the school colors, in this case, Georgia red. And you can adjust the thickness here. So now it's thick at the point origin and then tapers to a thickness of one at the destination. Now I'll just do this for all these schools. Bing! So here we have a hub and spoke map of all the recruiting footprints of the four teams. It might be interesting to compare the relative distances of each team and also between the classes within each team. This means we need to add a distance attribute to our player lines. I'll open up the analysis tools again and search for calculate. Geometry, geometry attributes. Select our lines. I have a field that's empty called distance. You might have to add a new field. And I'll populate it with geodesic length. And the units are, oh boy, I want miles. Statute miles? International nautical miles? US survey nautical miles? US survey miles? Turns out I want statute miles, AKA regular old miles. Let's see what we've got. Distance in miles. And if we're interested in some aggregate stats for this, you can just right click this field and choose statistics. And it very helpfully makes a histogram chart for you. I'm interested in the median value because some of those distance outliers coming from Australia and Germany can really throw off the mean. So I like median. So overall, the average distance that a player traveled from their hometown to school was 226 miles. But what if I wanna know more specifics like per school? No problem. I'll open up the definition query for this layer and I'll filter it. School is equal to Georgia. Apply. Okay, my chart and my median stats update. Later in the video, I did a comparison of how many players were within a one hour drive time of their home stadium. And here's how you can do this. To do this, I just isolate all the lat long coordinates that I had from my previous table into a new table to map out the schools. And then I use the XY to point tool to turn them into a map layer. I'll save the result to my geo database, and it's smart enough to know that the X field is longitude and the Y field is latitude. I'm not always that smart, thank you, and we'll run it. Make these a bit bigger. Okay, we now have the four school locations, specifically right on top of their stadium. And now I need to create the drive times or service areas, and honestly, the user experience for this is interesting. So I'll open the analysis tools, and I'm gonna search for 
drive time. The tool I'm looking for is Make Service Area Analysis Layer from Network Analyst. You might be using a different tool. I'm gonna to keep it to driving as opposed to you know trucking and walking away from facilities. Facilities in this case are my schools and cutoffs. I don't need these two cutoffs. These are time rings or isochrons. I want it to be 60 minutes of driving. What is the 60 minute drivability footprint around each school? I could set some really specific things here, but I won't. Okay, now in my map layers, I see a group called service area with facilities and polygons, all that good stuff. What do I do next? Well, you just choose this new tab, service area layer. I told you, it's an interesting workflow. And I'm going to tell it that the facilities are that playoff schools layer that I just made. Okay, let's see what we get. And it's not there. And I realize it's because, oh, I forgot to hit run. There's still one more step called run, run. Whew, goodness sakes, we've done it. At last, one hour drive times around all four schools. Now this layer is just sitting in the project, but if I wanna keep this, I'd better right click my polygons and export them so I can have them locally and reuse them for whatever I want. Whew. Okay, now I can get rid of this and style these layers. I want it to kind of look like a highlight. Instead of a solid stroke outline, I want to give it a gradient stroke. Stroke, so it looks like a little drop shadow. because the line is so thick, I only want it to render on the outside of the polygon. So I'll have to give it an offset of half of its thickness. Now I'm gonna use a blend mode to bake it in and make it look like a highlight. I don't want this default transparency. Full strength. And I'll use a layer blend of overlay, which looks pretty cool. Then I'll open up the attribute table for these and edit their names so they make sense. And then I can associate the presence of a player within one of these drive times by using a spatial join to the player's layer. The target features are the players and the features to be joined are playoff school one hour. I can get rid of all this junk and keep only name. And helpfully, it tells me that I've changed some of the attributes from my drive time when I renamed it. I'll go ahead and save those. And then I'll run it. And if I hit OK, a, sp a spatial join is performed so that if I look at the attributes now, it'll tell me for each player which drive time area, if any, they land within. And I can create some quick summary counts by doing a definition query. So I'll double click the player's label. I'll choose definition query, new one, and I can just build it up where, for example, Michigan players fall within the Michigan drive time. And the answer to that question is 20. And I can just tweak and repeat that query for each unique combination of school and drive time. Finally, let me show you how I made the base map for this. Instead of regular world imagery, I searched within Living Atlas for Firefly world imagery which is just a darker desaturated version. And it's useful if you're using color for data. The base map recedes and the data pops. And for context, I added human geography tile layers, also from Living Atlas. Human geography dark label and human geography dark detail. In the dark detail layer, I gave a blend mode of color burn so that the borders and the water appear nearly black. Now these techniques don't have to be used for football or even recruiting footprints. It could be anything that's hub and spoke related where you want to get a sense for the distribution and distance of stuff. And be sure to check out all of the results of this analysis at the first video where I nerd out on all the maps. Thanks for watching and I'll see you over there.